Well, welcome, everybody. Sorry we're a little late. Um, <coughs> minutes of the previous meetings, December 17th. Moved by Deputy Mayor Fisk, seconded by Councilor Turton, that the minutes of December 17th, 2013 Council meeting be approved and circulated. All in favor? Carried. Additional items disclosed out of business. Has anybody got additional items? Bill? Mayor Bridge, regarding the February 4th Council meeting? Yes. Be rescheduled. Right. Anybody else? I do. Oh, sorry. Harry and Ron. Mine's two. I got one too. Okay. Let's say everybody should have one. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to make something up then. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Rick. No, that's great. I'll get to those when everybody gets. We have no public meeting. Final resolution to move into under. Moved by Councilor Hamley, second by Councilor Elliott. The Town of Council convenes in the Committee of the Whole. All in favor? Harry. And no public meeting. We have a delegation. We welcome uh, you, Thompson. If you, you, if you want to come up, you're going to be on television. Oh, oh I know. It's, I know. I, they should have warned you. Right? <laughs> and uh, I got down here, transportation needs for north north part of, I'd say the north part of Wellington, not Wellington North, right? Right. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, thank you for uh, giving me a chance to uh, address council. I tell you, you only got 10 minutes though, you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and talk quickly then. Rick took five of it back there, yeah. Um, in talking to different people, there is definitely a need in the uh, north here for transportation for the seniors and uh, um, also the handicapped, those who are in wheelchairs. Uh, the only transportation that is available as of right now is either through family uh, supplying that and uh, maybe the family, if the uh, person is in the wheelchair, doesn't have a van that is capable of taking them there, or they can use the uh, ambulance transfer system. And unfortunately, it's very, very expensive. Uh, we have had people, for example, take it from uh, Palmerston down to London, and the cost ran at $700. Ooh. Ooh. And obviously, um, people can't afford that especially if they have uh, doctor appointments down there. Uh, upon uh, investigation, and again, I, I'm just basically getting started on this. Uh, I talked to uh, Terry um, just before Christmas, and I jumped on this because you have a budget coming up, and it may <laughs> affect that. Um, North Perth uh, has transportation for the seniors and uh, handicapped through the VON. Um, now, the funding for the uh, program comes through the Southwest LINS, uh, gas tax dollars and user fees. So the uh, figures for that, according to uh, Christine Vallis out of uh, Owen Sound, his with the uh, VON involvement, costs uh, or LINS puts in $68,000. There's a fundraising aspect of $8,000. And the user fees, well, there was no figure exactly for that. They really cannot, according to her, you really cannot count on the gas tax dollars as they don't know how much it'll be and uh, if they'll get any at all. That's more or less at the will of the uh, provincial government. User fees uh, in North Perth, if you're within six Ks of the uh, municipal office, that's the center point that they use, it's $4 one way. So if someone had to go to a doctor's appointment within list, will it be $4 and then $4 return, which is a reasonable cost, I think. If you're out of the uh, area but still in North Perth, out of that six-click uh, area, then it's $8 one way. So if someone lived in Gownstown, for uh, example, then it may cost them $8 to go to a doctor's appointment and $8 to get back. If you have long-range uh, long travel, for example, if you're going from uh, Listowel to uh, London, then they charge 80 cents a kilometer plus $15 an hour standby while you're in visiting the doctor, um, which is a lot cheaper than the $700 to get down there. They also have uh, volunteers who uh, drive vans for them, 
and they charge 37 cents a kilometer to use the, uh, the vans that they have available to transfer people. Now this isn't just for the handicapped either. This is for senior citizens. Um, so senior citizens, if they need it, they can contact the VON and uh, uh, get the transportation necessary. Uh, the wheel, uh, for the wheelchair access vehicle, uh, the dra drivers are actually paid employees. They don't pay them a heck of a lot. I think she said $11.50. And they're only paid while they're doing the transportation. <coughs> so if they have some transportation between 9 and 11, they would get paid for the two hours and then they don't have something until two o'clock, then they go back on the time she sheet at $2. So it's almost volunteer, really. It's not a big money-making thing. This service can be accessed <coughs> by uh, people in Palmerston, but if there's a need in North Perth uh, at that specific time, then the person in Palmerston would get bumped. So you really can't uh, uh, depend upon it. Um, if I have an appointment in London and I contact the VON and then at the last minute they cancel it, well that really is a kerfuffle right there because now I have to change the appointment and it just doesn't work out. Um, in some municipalities uh, the service is provided through uh, service clubs. So I'm giving you some of the uh, background on this. For example, it, there's an area right around uh, uh, Kitchener, and I don't have the exact area, but they are around there. I think it's the Kiwanis Club that run it. And I was talking to a lady last night who said that uh, someone had to go in to uh, get dialysis in Kitchener, and it cost them $4. It's a volunteer driver, and they would stay there while the person had uh, dialysis, which is Again, you might as well say they're volunteers. Um, it's nice to see. I have talked to uh, Connie McDonald from the uh, Waterloo Wellington Lynn. Oh, and by the way, uh, um, Listowel is not the same Lynn as we are. No, no, no. They're southwest, and we're uh, Waterloo Wellington. So I talked to Connie McDonald from uh, Waterloo Wellington, and she does acknowledge that there is a need uh, in the north here of transportation. However, there's nothing on the books, uh, even in future planning, to include it from their limbs, which is sort of distra uh, distressing. So why am I here? Well, I, mean, I do have some humble suggestions. Maybe before we look into this, it's possible to do a survey of our uh, citizens within this area. And I'm, I'm thinking, um, when I say this area, yeah, we're <coughs> in the town of Minto, but there's also a need in uh, um, Wellington North, so there could be some type of collaboration between the, the two councils if we could work on that. Um, but maybe what we need to do is to do a survey of our uh, citizens within the town of Minnow and see, number one, if there is a need, and number two, <clears throat> how much would the uh, people who need this be willing to pay? There's no use jumping into something and, and saying, uh, yeah, we're gonna go gung-ho, if the people say, well, and seniors have a tendency, I'm not quite a senior yet, they don't have the uh, same money, and sometimes they think uh, uh, in terms of 20 years ago, so um, <laughs> when you tell them uh, it's $8, they think that's outrageous. They're just sometimes not with it, but maybe we need to do a survey, and that could be done through the uh, town. Uh, you send out the newsletters, um, maybe something to put in there and, and get a response back from them or it could be done uh, uh, through the uh, town site. But I think it's worth looking into. Uh, there's three nursing homes in our area. Do we need to uh, approach them? There obviously is a need there. And what sort of responsibility do they have to the community? Uh, maybe they could come up with some dollars to uh, assist in this also. Uh, do we need to talk to the service clubs to garner uh, any support financially or just support overall? Um, again, I don't know the answer to that, but you don't know unless you talk to them. Do we need to talk to our local MPs, MPPs, or the Minister of Health? 
Because I think, as I say, they all acknowledge that there's a need, but no one wants to do anything. And again, I guess, do we need to talk to our Waterloo, Wellington, Linz and say, hey, what's going on? There is a need, you acknowledge it, what's the plan? Let's get something in place here. Now that all <clears throat> depends upon outside sources and, and the provincial government, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes uh, when you're dealing with that, I hate to say that uh, things get slowed down tremendously. Uh, you have to jump through a lot of hoops and sometimes those hoops are almost impossible to jump through. So I'm wondering, <clears throat> is it possible for the town itself to run the program using volunteer drivers? We have uh, TG Mental. Um, in Palmerston, which has shown a willingness to work with the uh, community as far as goodwill. TG makes uh, parts for Toyota. Toyota makes cars and vans. <coughs> and of course, um, Toyota has donated a car to uh, Norwell District Secondary School. So they have shown willingness to uh, help out. What could we do if we talk to them uh, and see if they don't want to donate a van or vans, um, what type of a price could we get from them for them to be wheelchair access? And then you would need to uh, get volunteers like myself to uh, drive them. Um, and of course, there's all sorts of questions that come in there. Insurance, would it be covered under the town insurance? Uh, and if so, how much additional money is it gonna cost for the insurance? Um, so there's, I don't know if it's possible or not, but I think it's worth looking into. And you would have to make sure that you had enough volunteers to uh, run the program. So there would be a, a need to find out if the volunteer uh, base is there. So, Summing it up, this is just a, a preliminary investigation, um, but with the budget deliberations underway, I felt necessary to approach the council today. There's all sorts of questions that uh, uh, need to be asked, I think. Um, I don't necessarily have the answers. Uh, as I said, I started just before Christmas, and of course over Christmas talking to some of these people, it's difficult to get a hold of them because it's Christmas time. But I am willing to uh, work further on this. And I appreciate your time, and uh, maybe council can think it over and, I don't know, strike a committee or whatever, talk amongst yourself and decide what you want to do. But there is a definite need in my mind within the community. And if you have any questions, I'd entertain them. I may or may not be able to yeah, answer Yeah, I'll do that. Ron, did you want to? <coughs> yeah, uh, Hugh, did uh, uh, Perth, uh, is that a county initiative? Um, I know it's in North Perth, but is it in all of Perth? And secondly, uh, did they do a needs uh, study and what kind of uh, questions did they ask to do that needs study? Uh, they have it in North Perth, but I think they also have it in, in uh, other as or Same other areas. parts of the yeah. uh, uh, county also. As far as uh, uh, doing the study, I can't answer okay. that question. I would assume that they would, would have done one. Yeah, it would make something. sense to go ahead without doing it. Any other, Gary? Well, I'd, I'd like to thank you, Hugh, for coming and bringing this report. We've talked about transportation a couple of years ago and actually put some money aside that we never did anything with. But um, in talking with you earlier, I think you made mention that there are six or eight of these types of vans in Waterloo, Wellington, Lynn. I don't know if they're wheelchair access. Okay. But they're all in the city anyway. That was the yes, point. Yes, yeah. And when that, we, sorry. And I think that we need to stress that, that we have needs up here too, probably more so than the city because we don't have public transportation here. So our people have to rely on this type of situation or these types of vans in order to get to their appointments in, in the city. So um, there's no doubt there's, there's a need. Um, the surveys would be helpful, but I, you know, almost every survey on what, what, these, what we need in the rural municipalities right near the top is transportation. And that's that's well known, and uh, even more so for th this group of people. <coughs> Rick, and then well, but where you're going to is who was the gentleman that came here? Was that a few years ago? Saugeen yeah. Mobility. Yeah. 
Can we put some money aside for that project? Maybe? Yeah, that we can put he, he never came back to us, but did he? But it was so cost prohibitive. I think uh, Mount Forest or uh, Wellington North looked at that uh, yeah. deal there. Uh, they decided not to go with it. Southgate uh, did sign up with this guy. Smart. And, they've uh, had and uh, they're not really happy. No. 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 no and the, it, the, the, uh, when we looked at it, I think the cost. I think I think the idea of the Lynn makes sense. Uh, I d go ahead, Dave. Before yeah, I thanks, Mayor Bridge. I, I remember a few years ago, my mom and dad were at uh, two nursing homes, and, and they needed assistance, uh, wheelchair accessible. And he, uh, Mr. Buckley had the taxi service, and, and it was really, really handy. I mean, we were extremely fortunate, uh, the, our family, to have him in our community. And uh, since then, he's off doing something else. But but I agree with you. You. Uh, where there's a lot of aged people and uh, underprivileged people and certainly they need it. Mm -hmm. And I think if I just bring up the, the county vision on this, you and maybe you're not aware of it, um, under the accessibility group, they're, they're looking at this and, and we're, we've signed up, we put $30,000 in the budget at the <coughs> county level uh, this year to put our names forward for a, 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 a good study uh, not not just whether there's a need there. I think we all know there's a need there, but how we get a, how we fund it properly so that it becomes a functional situation. And and this is a this is a um, a government run program that if if we get it, I think, and it, they haven't if Wendigan County gets it, I think they're looking at the north as as sort of where we're going to do the study, and that would be Mapleton, Wellington North, and ourselves. Um, but under the Accessibility Act, because and what you're bringing up, Dave, is a good point. When we we've gone out and said, we if you were if you wanted to run a, a van right now with the taxi service, we put the rules in place that economically you couldn't do it. So I think it is something that we have to take on a little bit as as government, uh, local government, and and maybe through the gas tax, and that's where the county effort would come. We maybe do it through the gas tax. I think it'd be hard for Minto to do it on its own. But I think it would be something that if you got a Mapleton and a Wellington North and a Minto cooperating, this would be something that might be some vision. And I appreciate the fact that you're willing to kind of step up to the plate and because it, it won't be run, it'll have to be run with a sort of a, a government volunteer base because I don't think you can get the cost down, as you were saying, for the seniors to make it reasonable for them to want to do it. Because under the, under the accessibility thing with the van, they can't charge more than a regular taxi drive. Well, you and I both know that if, if you're picking somebody up and you got in the wheelchair, you gotta go get them, get them into the thing, get them over, you're, you're expending a lot more money. So from a, from a private basis, it's not practical anymore. So there's a big gap there and we've gotta come up with some kind of way to fill that gap because I think Deputy Mayor Fist has said it and we've, it's not something we have, this council hasn't looked at is that there's a definite need. Like we see it in all of our other surveys. We see it in our strategic plan um, and we see it from an economic standpoint in the county level. So it, it's good timing. Um, there is some money in the county budget that's set aside and hopefully we'll, we'll move forward with that study. And, and, but the study isn't just a study where there's a need. The study is how you, how you produce the effective uh, model to make it happen, right? That's yep. what we have. I mean, we can study it to death. We already know that, that <coughs> there's a need, right? Yep. And, but how do we make it practical and, and still somehow cover enough costs that it isn't it's like anything else like it's whether it's an arena or whatever it, it's a part of doing business in your community but our population's growing older um, we're getting more reliant we live longer we we still want to get out and do all the things we want to do and as you say just a simple thing about going to get a doctor's appointment it can be stressful if if you haven't got the money to get out there and do it well and with the uh, with the hospital changes so we used to have the physio and yep. Palmerston Hospital now they have to go over to yep. uh, Forest. Yeah. Well, if you're a senior citizen, how do you get over? How do you there? get there? Yeah. You know, yeah, for that, sure. That presents a problem. Yeah. Anyways, but I'm glad, glad for you to come, and and I, it's something we'll keep a, a handle on and try to get as much. And if we have to give you a call to once we get a little further down the road. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Mr. You, George, um, you uh, know down at work, Toyota has given us a number of cars mm -hmm. for uh, fire prevention inspectors. And I'm going to probably say probably 15 or 20 over the years. Um, I can maybe talk to. Yeah, I think
think I think that's a great idea, and I think. But then again, you have to have somebody to run it, and we have to get the program in place. But I don't think we can do it. I, I'd be I'd be surprised if we could do it as Minto alone. Yeah. The difficulty with going to other tiers of government, Huey, is, uh, I, you know, what I know that uh, it takes more time. Well, yeah, it'd be so ten years before you're yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. No. The wheels of uh, justice run slow yeah. and grind uh, to a halt sometimes. So it, that's why it's nice that we, if we could try and do it locally, and, and you're probably correct, but if we share with other communities to stay within our local level, our local tier, maybe that would be the best route to go. At least we could maybe get something up and running in a... If we wanted to go through the sort of, uh, provincial government, maybe we should be buying helicopters and, and <laughs> yeah. supply that service. Absolutely, or, or build a subway in Palmerston or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I thank you for your time, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get something happening for these uh, uh, seniors and uh, disabled people. So thank you. Thank you. Good thank job. You. Public question periods. Anybody got a question? Correspondence received for information requiring direction of council. Everybody had a chance to read the correspondence? Any concerns? Anything you want to bring up? Motion to accept the correspondence. Sure. Councilor Faulkner, Councilor Elliott, all in favor? Carry. Um, reports of committees and town staff. Matters table, motions recently given. Uh, committee. Minutes for receipt. None. Property Standards Committee. Minutes of December 4th. Yes. Mayor Bridge, that, that's the first meeting of our Property Standards Committee. <clears throat> One point I wanted to make for you is that under this, uh, under the Building Code Act, the municipality has an appeal right. Mm -hmm. So we brought the minutes forward so you could see them first. CBO and I don't feel there's any need or reason for the town to appeal the decision, which simply gave the group more time to complete this. So what I'll be doing is uh, issuing a, uh, a notice of the decision, and uh, it's a 14-day appeal period. But basically, I just wanted to make sure you saw the information and that there wasn't anyone that was so concerned that they thought the town might want to appeal that decision. Otherwise, it's just a motion to accept the minutes. Motion to accept, or you are? Yep. yep. Councilor Kurt and Councilor Caldwell, all in favor? Great. Okay. The next one is the tree committee. I guess that's mine, is it? Mayor Bridge, if I may, for the trees for farm, I uh, assisted with the preparation of the minutes. Yeah. Five I minutes. wrongly indicated that the spouses of them, Edwin and Jonas, yeah, they were, were there. there. They weren't at, in attendance, so we will correct that. That was my fault because I, I had a list of, and they wrote it on their list. They signed in as if they, they were. Signed in as if they were there together, but they were. <laughs> I just like to make one point. I won't, don't want to ever take minutes again. <laughs> Always ever to be. I want to make sure that I don't have to ever do that again. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Where was the stop? <laughs> you had marked it. In respect to the tree. Yep. Committee, how? Um, is there any effort to? Uh, Bring other uh, people onto that committee. Yeah, we're in the process right now. Okay, because because I'm thinking of, of uh, I know the 2016 plow match is probably going to be on mm -hmm. side with mm -hmm. with with that, and and we all I think saw the benefits of these tree fences and whatever. Uh, we all you have to do is drive past any section of road where there where they were on the prevailing side, mm -hmm. and the road was like night and day to drive on um, and and uh, with large cash croppers today like I, I think it's really imperative that uh, we, we uh, encourage one of them or more to sit on that committee Gary do you want to speak to that because we there was some talk about that at well, the meeting uh, and that that's probably the only uh, proponent of the agricultural community that's missing from this yeah. this committee right now and we need them yeah. we, sure we haven't i don't know if we found anybody that was willing or no well, had the interest over christmas we didn't get we there were some leads out there i have to follow up on 
and that's why I said we're going to have a meeting in February. I hope to have a couple of them there. But if you have, if you have people, you know of anybody, yeah, we'd be very happy to receive those. Yeah, like I, I, I was I just thinking of do some work on that yeah. because uh, I think it's imperative. And and that's what's brought up, and I I think um, I can't remember who it was on that was going to check too because of the connection through through the trees from Mapleton. They thought there would be a couple people that. But we'll have to get on that. That's first priority before we have another meeting. Yeah, we have to have them at the table. Okay, good. Um, so that, that, that's the next step. And when we get that, those couple people in, we want to have it in February. And then we can go forward with it. Um, so. uh, Mayor Bridge, if, we, if you were to approve the minutes as amended, um, we do have the appointment bylaw discussion yes. later on. And I think it's important that we have one or two of those names come forward before February 3rd. Yes. Because we'll attempt to appoint everyone at that time. Yeah. A motion to accept the minutes. Elliot, uh, Councillor Elliott and Councillor Emily. All in favor? Very good. Okay. Yeah, we'll get on that because that's that's really important. <coughs> Actually, you was one of the ones that I was getting grabbed before the meeting. Yeah. He, he had some names for me. and. Yeah, let's do the max. We're going to do the max people first, if that's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is nice because you guys can go home then, eh? I mean, I know you want to stay here for the whole meeting, but no, that's all right. Okay, so, Bill, that's yours. You Mayor Bridge, uh, the report is before you on the proposed site plan for the max convenience store. As a resident of Harrison, I'm one of the most excited about Yeah. It. <laughs> gas station being located between my home and the farm where our horses are, so I'm excited about that. Different kind of gas. So <laughs> yeah. the gas station in Harrison? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that was a novel idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be 13 of them. <laughs> we, uh, so I guess the question is, how did you kick them all out of town? <laughs> Should we be concerned? <laughs> no, trust us. <laughs> Paul Pitt, remember. <laughs> so, Stuart. Yeah, Mansers here and others from, from Max and we met with them in the fall, I guess, or summer yep. to talk about this and, and now the plans came in just before Christmas. So the site plan is presented to you in a report. Uh, Stuart did get a copy of it, I think late Friday. Um, we've been through all our commenting groups, uh, including Triton Engineering. It's quite a significant site as far as servicing and they have had a good look at that and those comments have been forwarded. Um, I don't have to say a whole lot about the site. It's it's part of the Her adjacent to the Harrison Motors property. Uh, it's a 3,500 square foot building, just over that. It's got entrances to each of the three streets that it sits on. Um, it's a it's an attractive new format that they use around uh, Ontario and yeah, other places, nice. and uh, so we'll have a brick exterior, attractive use of, uh, of logos and glass and bollards in the front. Fortunately, your co copies came out kind of pinkish. I don't think it's quite <laughs> that color. But uh, no, we're going to talk to you about that. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a color <laughs> we're going for. There's like, nothing wrong with the pink. That's no, fine. Slow but it. <laughs> the use that's designed is is compliant with with zoning. Um, inside the building will be the convenience uses, the premium coffee shop, I believe a subway as well. Uh, we are working with subway, working it, and I mean that is yet to be confirmed, confirmed, but something that we feel is integral to our use mm -hmm. at the current location would like to incorporate mm -hmm. uh, if we can. So yeah, it seems busy at the current location. It does, yeah, it does. So our recommendation is that uh, the plan be approved. During the course of the uh, review, there was some comment about entrances that need to be maybe refined a little bit as far as design. There is some environmental monitoring on the property and so we want to deal with that in the site plan agreement as well. A couple of little grading and drainage uh, tweaks that uh, the engineer has recommended but otherwise it's a it's an excellent site plan. It's the kind of site plans we love to bring forward to you because it has all the details that everyone could ever want to know and more <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to seeing this proceed. So our, our recommendation is to approve with conditions. We have a standard form development agreement that I would get to Stuart uh, this week. And yep. We would finalize that and then they can get on to closing their land deal and getting a building permit. So Master, I have questions. if you have questions, I could try to answer them or That's right, people who are here. Yeah. So. 
Uh, there it is. I was just trying to, to see the logistic of it. So as far as an entrance point, if you entered off Valora Street, you would go into the gas station and then Max would be behind it. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Or if you wanted to, you could go down Ann Street and go right into Max. Right. The uh, site plan has been designed so that it's actually passed through lanes on both ends of the gas park. So you wouldn't actually have to drive between the pumps. Um, you could drive between the westerly boundary of the property and the end of the canopy, or the easterly boundary of the canopy and the, uh, the entrances off of Anne. So you wouldn't have to go between the pumps, essentially. You could bypass the pumps to get back to the store if you came in off of Laura. I thought that, but that's good. Okay, and this will butt right up to the Harrison Motors property uh, as far as like where their cars are currently? Uh, in terms of where they have the cars sitting exactly today, I can't answer that. If you can uh, picture the retaining wall that's there mm -hmm. on the edge of the property, it just divides. Okay. As you look towards the back of the property, right. kind of where the holding, the vehicle holding uh, part yeah. portion is actually on uh, our, or the property we're looking to purchase. Okay. Um, they're well aware that we've been in communication with them and are uh, allowing them to have that there and helping them as long as we possibly can before we need to build. Um, but that retaining wall is essentially the edge of the site plan here. Okay. So there will be a setback from their property for both the building and the canopy. It won't be right abutting their property. There'll be some drive lane and some landscaping abutting their property. Great, thank you. Okay, <coughs> any questions? Good. Great. Yeah. Well laid out, very yes, well done. Really Thanks. Very well. I'd like to thank our architect, yeah. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just do want to say the town has been very helpful through this process, uh, particularly Mr. White. Um, and all of his staff and the other staff of the council. Thank you very much for receiving us. Um, we're sorry, sorry Stuart. Uh, for the mayor, Stuart. Uh, what, what's the plan? Have you got a plan for the old property? Uh, the old property we still have lease term remaining on. Um, we have not come to a conclusion as to exactly the close opening dates for those two properties. Uh, we will be on the hook, as it were, for that location as long as the lease remains. Um, and have not exactly decided how we'd like to address that. This is something that we come into contact with quite often mm -hmm. as we're repositioning stores, expanding them in different markets. So oftentimes we'll find a use that uh, is applicable under the current zoning um, and the town would approve, or we just carry the lease ourselves to its end, depending on the time that's left. So that's a different department inside Max, but if there's any further questions, I would be happy to address them. Yeah, future. so up and running in 2013, or 14, pardon me? Uh, yes, that is our goal, um, as why we've been working so diligently, yep. and again, the town's been so helpful yep. in helping us uh, attain that quickly. So, great. Well, we, we you. appreciate all your hard work on it, and yeah, uh, if, you. if you need help from, from the town again on the economic development side with Mandy or Belinda when she gets back, or possible usage of the other building, we'll certainly help you with that as well because you're stuck with the leases we, we'd like to see something in there great and, great uh, we'll try to work with people that we yeah. know and maybe a call center for the new uh, cap company yeah <laughs> <laughs> there you go thanks very much for coming great appreciate that thank you very much thank you, thank you. cheers thank you. good luck yeah good have fun at budget week yeah <laughs> you have a motion on the recommendation yeah move by deputy mayor fist and by councilor call all in favor you're all you're in the good <laughs> There you go, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. I just threw it over there. Oh. The He's up again. <laughs> <laughs> now you can come here. <laughs> now you got, you got a bit of a challenge. You got a, maybe an empty spot to fill. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to stand over here so I'm out of the way. And my back's not to anyone. So this is just a review from the Economic Development and Tourism Departments for 2013. So some of the committees that we belong to are listed here. I apologize, they are a little bit small, um, but our local committees are the Economic Development and Planning Committee, the Cultural Roundtable, and the Minto Creative Industry Incubator. Those are all committees of council. We then also have the Downtown Revitalization Committees, Farmers Market, the Healthcare Professional Recruitment, and the Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Women of Wellington Saugeen area. Our regional committees that we belong to are the Joint Economic Development, and that's with Northern Wellington, so Mapleton, Wellington North, and ourselves. And then the uh, Wellington County Municipal Economic Development Group as well. Taste Real Guelph Wellington, RT04, which is the Regional Tourism Organization, the Economic Developers Council of Ontario, Young Professionals Network, and the Planning Committee. And that conference is actually coming up 
February 4th to the 7th. We're also part of Working in Rural Wellington, and we're currently working on the Wellington County Festivals and Events Guide. This is from Taste Reel. This year we were very excited. We're on the steering committee, and we won the Economic Developers Association of Canada Brand Identity Award, which is national, and we also won the Economic Developers Council of Ontario Strategic Plan Award, and that was provincial. So this is a county initiative that we are a part of. And this is some pictures from the Spring Rural Romp. This is an adorable picture of my little niece, Paisley, and Addison and my nephew, Connor. <laughs> and they had a fantastic time this year at the Spring Rural Romp. They can't wait to come back again this year, May 25th. And this picture here is just some of our steering committee members. So you might recognize a few faces there. Think Minto First Campaign is a campaign done by the Minto Chamber of Commerce, and we partner with them on that. We also do local Minto gift baskets, and uh, this year what we did was we approached various businesses <coughs> to get products to put into gift baskets to give away at various events, such as the Lions Golf Tournament. Um, some of the products inside were Generations Choice Pasta, which is delicious, <laughs> um, cedarwood honey, maple syrup, um, scapes from Greenbush Heritage Organic Pickled Scapes, they were very good as well. And then these are some pictures from the Minto Farmers Market. This gentleman here is our summer student, Matt Grant. He was the one that was uh, working day to day with the Minto Farmers Markets. And then there's a funny picture of Gordon and I. <laughs> 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 Incognito. Communities. Communities and Blooms, we are very proud of this. We were awarded the five bloom status in the Circle of Excellence non-competitive division and that was nationally. We were also awarded the Butchered Gardens Land Reclamation Award for the Palmerston Lions Heritage Park and that was also national. These are pictures from the council dedication ceremony when we presented everyone who's involved with a certificate. So Gord, myself, and the mayor had a lot of fun this year showing off our community to the judges, and uh, we've planned to participate in it again this year, not being evaluated. <laughs> Don't worry, Bill. <laughs> so tourism development, we're going to continue to work on garden packages. We did this last year with Taste Reel. We maintain the kiosk at the Harrison Library, and we're looking to expand that into the incubator space. Last year, we had the Harrison Heritage Days, Mayor's Charity Golf Tournament, Harrison Ladies Night, and Palmerston Merchants Christmas Open House. Light up the town, savor the flavors, Palmerston and Harrison Minto Fairs. Those are just some of the events that we helped participate in. There's a great picture of Bill and Terry here for the Mayor's Charity Golf Tournament. This picture here is from the Harrison Heritage Days, light up the town, and that's Wesley Bates there with the uh, silent auction from the Minto Arts Council. The business retention and expansion is almost done. We have three days left for the surveys. And at the end of that, it will be the largest and most complex survey un ever undertaken in the province of Ontario. So we're very excited about that. We will have completed 50 surveys in total, <laughs> just in Minto alone. So that's a huge number of surveys that have been completed and we can't thank the business community enough for taking their time to fill out those and meet with us. The, the sectors that we focused on were healthcare, creative economy, agriculture, manufacturing, and downtown. And uh, excuse me. the Minto Creative Industry Incubator is going well underway. We're still looking towards our uh, job applications. The deadline is this Friday at 12 noon. The Pitch It Business Plan competition is going to be starting again in February. And uh, the Women of Wellington Sogging Area Networking and Education events start up again in February as well. Oops, you have to excuse my cough there. <laughs> so planning and infrastructure, this is one of my favorite slides. Through our community improvement plan, our facade and signage program, we provided $10,608 in grants for projects totaling over $34,570, which means we leveraged $23,962. So for every dollar we gave out, we, the business has spent $2.25, which is phenomenal. And I just realized I should have put a before picture of the Brown Insurance building, but that's the after picture and it just looks fantastic. Community revitalization. We work with streetscapes, 
uh, public spaces and public art and uh, the events and promotions that we help the businesses with in our downtown cores and throughout the town of Minto are the Harriston Heritage Day sidewalk sales, the Palmerston Fair photo contest and the annual town of Minto photo contest. The reason we have these photo contests are to build our inventory of photos so we can use them in our community attractions guide and the festivals and events guides. <coughs> the um, My Neighbor campaign, this is something that we did last year and we're going to start to roll it out this year. So you'll see these hanging up throughout our community and uh, in the newspapers. I really like Terry and Wendy Cormack there from the Palmerston Home Hardware. <laughs> My neighbor hangs out with tools. <laughs> And they've approved these slogans, so. <laughs> and then uh, there's a picture of Grant and Amy from Grant Service Center, and it says, my neighbor caught me off balance with a picture of a tire. So they're cute little slogans that'll hopefully remind people to shop local. Some of them weren't approved, though, eh? <laughs> some, some we had to change. <laughs> some we didn't bother with. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting ones. <laughs> so business recruitment, again, the Pitch It Business Plan competition is going to be starting in February. We are changing the format a little bit this year so that not only do the winners get prizes, but everyone who participates will get more prizes to incentivize more people to participate. And uh, we manage and coordinate the downtown revitalization process for all three downtowns. And this is going to be an example of what the Clifford mural will look like on the side of Larry Grummet Insurance. Some community re revitalization uh, groups that we work with, so the healthcare services, some of you are aware, we sit on the doctor recruitment committee, sorry, the healthcare recruitment committee with a focus on physicians, trying to recruit them to our area. We work with the Career Education Council of, and Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program to really try and match employee requirements with youth skills. And we've been working with the local immigration partnership through the Wellington County Municipal Economic Development Group. We've been trying to partner existing businesses that already hire immigrants and um, internationally trained professionals. So we're just trying to profile those. The Treasures of Minto Cultural Roundtable. We did the culture bus this year and the Ghosts of Minto Past. We're looking at having another Ghost of Minto Past launch just to kind of go over some of the findings that we had. The movie series and some completed projects are the Incubator Research Project. Creative Worker Videos and the Rural Creative Economy Summit. The Community Gardens meeting is tomorrow night at 6.30 here, <laughs> and uh, the Treasures of Minto website is just right there. So this picture here is a picture of Caitlin Hall from Reroot Organic and Hope Robertson from Whiteman Telecom. Those were two of the videos that were featured. And then this picture is here is me showing the um, arrowhead in Clifford and explaining it to the delegates at the conference as to why we chose to put that in downtown Clifford. This is also one of my favorite slides. This is the grand openings we had in Minto in 2013. Long list, <laughs> Minto Computers, A1 Lego, Mike's Decor, Hair Therapy, Illusions Salon and Spa, MS Beauty Salon and Spa, the Script Cafe, Alexander's Airbrush, Solutions Office Supplies, Minto Egg, and Four Seasons Floral. Don't think I missed any, but if I did, <laughs> I apologize. And these are just some pictures that we took from those grand openings. We're working uh, with working in rural Wellington right now to get a job fair going again this year, as well as another bus tour. And uh, this picture here is of our Economic Development and Planning Committee. There's Bill White, our CIO, Councillor Faulkner, Mayor Bridge, Joel Coops from MSW Plastics, uh, Councillor Caldwell, Jerry uh, Hurst from the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture Food and the Ministry of Rural Affairs. John Mock's in the back there, he's really hard to see. He's owner of Home Hardware. <laughs> Harold DeVries from the Guelph Wellington Business Enterprise Center. Jonathan Zettler hiding in behind Gord there from Cargill. And Gordon Duff, of course. And uh, MSW Plastics, this is a picture from their grand opening. And this year they received a grant for 250000 which would create nine new jobs. Rick, Rick's there. You were with Rick, wasn't it? Rick, Rick was missing from that oh, picture. He was behind the camera, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. He took the picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Investment attraction, so biannual visits to MEDTE, <laughs> residential development in Harriston at the senior school, the purchase of the former rail lands in Clifford for residential and recreational use, 
We finalized the agreement for the NR store in the Harrison Industrial Park. Warren Bowman additional land purchase at the Harrison Industrial Park. The Tim Hortons agreement was finalized for the Palmerston Industrial Park and four pending sales in the Palmerston Industrial Park. So it's been a very busy year and uh, lots of work. <laughs> Marketing and communications, public media and relations. We've had the mayor's breakfast. We're looking to host another one again in April. And we did the service club tours along with the grand openings. Brand management, we, we adopted, or sorry, the council approved our social media policy as well as the firefighters' social media policy. And we've completed a communications and logo usage and style guidelines policy, and those are pending. They're just being reviewed right now. So our websites, Town of Minto had 40,622 hits this year between January 1st and December 18th, which is phenomenal. It shows that people are going to our website and looking around. Economic development had 1,548, and Treasures of Minto had 438. So our websites and online presence are being used. And social media, this is my, uh, <coughs> my favorite slide. <laughs> our Facebook page is up to 356 likes, which is up 185 from 2012. And with the winter storm that we had alone, it jumped up over 40 likes just in that two-day, three-day span. So people are turning to our social media to get information, that quick information that we can send out to them. Twitter is at 273, which is up 160. And our YouTube views are at 1,335. So council videos are, <laughs> they are taking off on YouTube. They take off a lot of didn't say we're viral yet. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> so uh, we redesigned the community attractions guide last year. And uh, the community festival, we're on the committee for the festivals and events guide for Wellington County. And we're looking at redesigning that for this year. The creative worker videos are complete and the creative economies marketing banners are complete. They're in my office right now and this is what they, they will look like. We'll bring those to different trade shows, etc., to let people know about our community. And we also have the back page in the Rural Route magazine. This is where we keep our property and land inventory and it, this fast facility just tells us every time somebody looks at an industrial property on that website, it sends us an email to say somebody's looked at it. So from January 1st to December 18th, we had 1,054 hits on industrial land alone. So it's pretty high numbers. <laughs> and our economic development and tourism staff resources, Belinda Wickram, there she is, <laughs> and myself. Yeah. And you, actually, you don't actually work together. Like you yeah, we just cross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Attorney ships. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, Terry's first. Oh, Terry's first. Just me. All right, Go just ahead, Terry, to wrap up, uh, kind of December of 2013, and just do an overall 2013, kind of what uh, what we did. Uh, December of last year, we issued six permits uh, worth 188,000. So, being the kind of December we had, it's not uh, not too too surprising. Not too many people want to start. <laughs> um, overall, on the residential side for 2013, um, we issued 19 permits. Um, which equates to 23 new units um, and those 23 units uh, uh, construction value is about five and a quarter million um, just to do some stats it works out to about 231,000 a unit or 272 and a half thousand for a single family detached dwelling a uh, non-residential side of things was was pretty active last year uh, we issued 18 uh, non-res permits um, some of the big projects uh, that we did uh, were the Harrison Fire Hall, uh, Renault's on Tim Hortons, uh, we got a new repair shop on uh, County Road <coughs> 5, uh, Gray's auction are putting up an addition, um, Leslie's did one, uh, Homestyle Flavors did one, as well as we've got the inner store or Temporal Power under construction uh, right now. Um, so of those 18 permits, that equated to about uh, 5.4 million worth of construction value. 
Um, in the agricultural end of things, uh, the value for those 28 permits was about 2.6 million. Uh, we got two brand new barns up and uh, running now. Uh, we issued permits for 16 sheds and uh, a bunch of additions onto barns and miscellaneous stuff. So that's kind of what we were most active at last year. So any questions? Yes. Councillor Elliott. Hey, Mr. Mayor, um, just wondering, the former Palmer Hotel, are they, uh, they're still working away on that and they, their permit, are they continuous to work? Or is there any, uh, any thoughts when they may complete I have seen them in there working. Yes, um, I, I certainly have too. And I have, I, I've done, um, I think, just one inspection to date so far. So they're plugging away at it. I haven't seen them in the last little bit, but. Um, I, I think last week I saw someone going in there. Oh, okay. So, so, so that, yeah, they have all their permits in place and, and they are plugging away at have, it. Have they got any? Uh, I haven't, I haven't nailed down or even talked to the owner in the last year or so about uh, an actual finish date. So, so I can't say. Another important revitalization area down in our, our in part of our community. So yep. I just uh, was really hoping that they continue on. That's good to hear. I was going to say it's good to see that there's action happening. Good there. news. So, yeah, it's it's yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Richard. What was the name that you added to the NR store? Uh, temporal power. Can you spell it? T E M P O R A L. Okay. That's how it sounds. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, to you, Mayor Bridge, I guess basically the main difference between 2012 and 2013 would be the OPP building at Tividale as far as dollar that, value. That was a big one. Uh, that one was worth, I believe, around $6 million, um, as well as we had Minto Ag. Um, so that was another $2 million, or a little under $2 million there. So we're, yeah, we're basically with those two permits, we're right back to the same numbers as we are sitting today. Yes. And like you're looking at 2011, it's about 15.5. Yep. This past year was about 15.5, yep. but the anomaly, if you want to call it that, was 2012 at 22.5. And that was huge, yeah. Um, made the difference. On the, the graph that I have uh, in there, it actually has a note about the 10 year averages. Um, for construction value, uh, this past year, we're still sitting slightly under a million more than what our normal 10-year average construction value is. So um, basically our 10-year average is running about 14 and a half million and we issued about 15 and a half million this year. So we're still looking, still looking good. Above the average. Yep. Any other questions, Terry? No. Nope. 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 Great, thank you. Job, uh, motion to accept the uh, Councillor Faulkner, Councillor Hamley, all in favor? Great. What's up next? Go to Roma. Go to Roma. I'm on the right page now. Yeah. Okay, you're taking that? <laughs> yes, Mayor Bridge. The uh, Ontario Good Roads Association or Rural Ontario Municipal Association Conference is coming up at the end of February. The deadline for online submissions for delegations is this Friday. I've listed the delegations that uh, Council has done since throughout its term, so there are some six or seven of them there. Um, just seeking any input as to what you might want to appear before the ministers to speak about this time. I think it's good that Council does these. I think we get to see a little, every time we go a little bit more about how they operate there, and some of the people involved, and it's always good to get Minto's name out there as well. Um, some thoughts for where, who you might see Minister of Infrastructure to follow up on accessing the provincial gas tax or sustainable infrastructure funding. Uh, Ministry of Municipal Affairs dealing with the reporting obligations of municipalities, status of provincial uh, um, policy review. Minister of Economic Development and Trade, maybe they have this new certified industrial park site program we might want to ask them about. And, talk to them about our, about our business incubator in, initiative. There's also the Ontario, uh, the OMAFRO, you can go and speak to them about similar things as well. But uh, just some thoughts um, around the department head table, more than anything, the sustainable infrastructure funding, I think, or access to provincial gas tax, that's likely uh, something we wanna keep, keep uh, emphasizing 
you'll recall we did ask for a um, non-merit based program with a sustainable funding amount turns out they did a merit based program for for this year and so far luckily we're still in the game for a potential grant but over the long term I think we really need to see something that's not competitive based but based on need or assessment or something like that right questions for the councillor I would, I know it's not a very um, warm and fuzzy topic, but I'd like to be uh, a school to review reduced municipal reporting. When you look at 280 reports, that's basically one a day, one a working day, you know, for a small staff, more than that, yes. <coughs> for a small staff, I think that's very cumbersome. And, uh, you know, maybe through Bill we could put together reports that you feel are either duplicated or non-essential or something that you're that we're reporting on or or cutting back on uh, the length of some of them okay happy to do that i, I the email says 280 and a lot of them happen kind of um sort of without much fanfare but there are definitely some things that we might be able to talk to them about there's the performance measures program that they have in place uh, and how they uh, that and how, how they're going to use the asset management reports and what's going to happen with some of this material that they keep asking for the green energy initiative that they have uh, those are two or three that we could talk to them about for sure not that we don't want to do them but maybe there's another way of streamlining Making them less cumbersome yeah so that's certainly a, if you want we could put through some ideas in that uh, through you, Mayor Bridge, um, I think the, the provincial ga gas tax gaining access to that, I think that's really crucial. And I know we've we've done it before, but I'm I'm thoroughly convinced that us keep we kept banging on the w water source protection, and and I think we got some results there in a roundabout way. I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't want to give us credit for it, but there were a lot of changes made. Yeah. Plus, we our funding was uh, more than anyone else received, and I. I'm guessing if they keep seeing the same faces and hearing the same names with the same message that eventually the message gets through. So I think that's another one that, that we need to keep pounding away at. I, I was noticing the downtown incentives and I think that's something we have to continue to do too. Right? We, we don't seem to get any, a lot of uh, help from provincial government for uh, moving forward and having uh, landlords move forward and improve their, their buildings and make it a lot nicer. We, we, we seem to be powerless at moving forward with that. And if we could uh, at least talk to the right people about that kind of thing, and maybe they could uh, give us some more powers, at least uh, knock on that door and see what happens. Anything else? I just want to mention what Deputy Mayor Fisk was talking about. I, I think we can go back on the gas tax issue because we did it in 2011. Since then, we've got the asset management program, and under the asset management program, as you know, it, it sort of says we have to put away $2 million a year out of a $4 million budget uh, for our infrastructure deficit. That's almost impossible. Well, even you, Mary Lou, couldn't figure that out even between you and Gord, how we're going to do that. <laughs> but, but I think it goes back, and we can maybe go back, and I agree with Deputy Mayor Fisk. I, we kept going back, and people kept saying to us, they're not listening, they're not listening, but they did listen in the end, and I give them credit for that, that they did put some money with, with the program, with the source water, and I think part of it was, not just us, but I know a lot of municipalities fought that battle, but it, it doesn't hurt to get in front of people, and I, and I like the way we approach it, because uh, uh, Bill has done a good job, and I know people that have been in the room with me, it does a good job about not just pointing out the problem, but trying to give a solution, and I think that's important. I mean. We always get people who want to tell us it's wrong, but they don't come up and say, here's what you could do to make it right. So I think that's been a good asset for us as well. And I think, I think we've got a little bit of a, um, appreciation at, at, at Queen's Park on the fact that when Middle comes to the table with a problem and they, we address it, we come up with a little bit of an idea of how you might fix it. And I think with the gas tax thing, it, it, with, their property, with having our asset management, I think that's a, that's a big one to go for. Um, so I'd like to see us try to get to that one. Sure. Mayor Bridge, if yep. we had a, a recommendation to approve the report and that we submit on reporting responsibilities, provincial gas tax, and 
downtown incentives, then yep, we'll do that. Light it up. Okay. Councillor Turkey. Councillor Caldwell. All in favor? Good. And we've got the max done. So next up is the zoning, right? So I'm going to declare a conflict on this one. So I'll turn it over to you, Deputy Mayor Fisk. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Missed the question period. Okay, uh, CEO White, you you're going to present this Thank issue you. for us. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Fisk. This purpose of this report is to initiate a zoning bylaw amendment for the rezoning some of our lands in the Palmerston Industrial Park. The reason for the rezoning uh, back in 2008, Council at the time looked at expanding the Palmerston Industrial Park and constructing a new road west of Minto Road to service some smaller industrial lots. Uh, the zoning of the lands was set with a highway commercial zone along the front and an industrial, general industrial zone along the back. Now that general industrial zone has a holding provision in it. What that holding rule says is that the general industrial zone does not apply until there's servicing in place, an archeological analysis was done and we've got a stormwater management plan. Over the years since then, there's been quite a lot of interest in the uh, industrial properties. And back last year, you approved an RFP whereby Triton Engineering would design the road. And actually, that little diagram you had is the preliminary design with the sewer and water shown and how that roadway would work in that location. The issue came forward about, well, if we're going to have uh, a roadway there where should it be located and at one point it was at the back of the three lots where the future Tim Hortons is shown so if we'd have put the road at that location then you would have seen the uh, uh, the, the Tim Hortons property for example having frontage on three new three public streets uh, we looked at that and we talked to the county and it was felt from a, a department head perspective that we could be more efficient with our road construction if it was located one lot further north. Mm -hmm. And the county consented to that with one single joint entrance on that part five. So the three lots that front on Wellington Road 23 will have one single entrance to uh, the county road. Uh, the Tim Hortons will also have an access to Minto Road. And then the industrial commercial lots in behind will all front on the cul-de-sac as shown there. The issue that's created is that the zone boundary reflected s somewhat of an old configuration. And so it's important to get, so there's no confusion, those lots that are um, fronting on the new road we're going to build into a, a zone that makes sense for what is proposed for that site. Um, what we're suggesting is a mixed industrial commercial zone that kind of allows for general industrial uses as well as some of the commercial uses that are allowed in the front. This kind of gives you a buffer between the general commercial or the highway commercial where Tim Hortons will be and these lots and then the general industrial that would be to the north. We've spoken to the county about this. They're in agreement that it would be appropriate to do the rezoning. The way our procedure would work is we'll initiate the zoning amendment. We'll get a notice out to the public and the county will do a report and in that report, they'll recommend specific uses that might be in the commercial industrial zone. But we've listed some in there at the top of page two that we might want to add in there, such as automotive repair, service, washing, automotive accessory sales, mini storage, farm and boat service, those sorts of things. It makes it kind of like a business park location rather than an industrial park. And uh, on those small lots, it's nice to have a range of things that might go on there. So uh, council can have some input into that when the when the county planner is here and can talk to you a little bit more about <coughs> some of the ideas they may have. Uh, the holding provision, the, the rules that were in place, I mentioned the stormwater, the engineering design of the services and the archeological, that has all now been completed. So we might as well remove the holding zone at the same time. Interestingly enough, there was a stage four archeological study done back in 2005. They did find one of the original farm residences on that property and a lot of the material around that was excavated and cataloged and dealt with according to the provincial policy so it was an interesting site it turns out and that 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 work is now done and so 
we can move on with redevelopment according to this plan. So our recommendation is that you initiate a zoning amendment for a commercial industrial zoning on the lots and that uh, we remove the holding provision on the remainder of those properties that will front on the new road. Okay, thank you. Any, any questions? Also moved. Moved by Councillor Faulkner, second by Councillor Caldwell to receive the recommendation. Any discussion required? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, to you, Bill, the appointment bylaw. Me again, Mayor Bridge. I'll try and be brief. You've probably heard enough from me today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Appointment well, bylaw update. Be a raise or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you were late, I know. Um, appointment bylaw update. There are four issues that are listed for you to consider. We brought this report now so that you can think about it in the next three weeks. Our next council meeting will be February 3rd. That's Monday, February 3rd unless you tell me differently later on. And uh, at that time, we'll need some names for some of these committees to come forward. Um, Mr. Lawless, the former mayor, did pass away. He was on the James Way Manor Board. Uh, the board has since forwarded some names. So we can put forward those names <coughs> for you in the February 3rd bylaw. The Trees for Farm Initiative, we talked about that earlier. Um, we should appoint the people that were actually at the meeting. For the two not the spouses uh, and <laughs> we weren't and plus whoever else we can get from the commercial farming industry and I hear that Deputy Mayor Councillor Falkland and the Mayor are going to work on that representative the business incubator board of directors there's quite a number of people to appoint looks like four five eight people a member of council member of the economic development and planning committee um, two members from the Minto Chamber of Commerce one member from the cultural roundtable, I believe they meet next week, and three members from the public. I believe the chamber has found their two members. We have one, we talked about this at Economic Development Committee last week, and th there were three uh, sector representatives that were targeted, I guess, for lack of a better word, by committee, and one of those has just indicated a willingness to look at that today, so we probably have an economic development rep we will need three at-large people and one member of council sometime between now and February 3rd to come forward. Property Standards Committee, uh, Mr. Pritchard did pass away in, in 2013 and he was the sixth member of the committee. They did meet last year and as five and it worked quite well. I'm not convinced you need another member on that committee, but if you wish to, you'd need to find a name to replace Mr. Pritchard. Also, uh, reappointing yourself as Committee of Adjustment should happen annually under the legislation. So a few other things that will come off as far as miscellaneous. The Early Learning Center is wound down. We don't require that any further. And the Chair of the Parks and Recreation will be coming forward with some names. We have an illness in there and uh, a term that's coming up, and I think they've dealt with that, their membership. So we need to formalize that next meeting. So the recommendation is that we deal with those things. I guess the best way would be, probably since the mayor technically, I guess, deals with your appointments, is that if you wanted to get communicate with the mayor and myself, um, and if there's more than one person, say, that wants to be on the incubator, then we'll communicate that out through the email. Right. So keep an eye on that as to how we'll do it. But it'd be nice to have that decision made so we can put the name in the bylaw. Um, uh, on February 3rd and I know some of you won't be here as well so it's timely to try and iron this all out in the coming weeks. <laughs> recommendation to receive the report yep. and proceed. Right, recommendation to receive the report. Uh, all in favor? Oh, sorry, just to move by question. Can right. I, yeah, I, I'm just worried because there's going to be so many of us away in the month of February, why is it 
urgent to have this passed and agree with this. Well, well, hopefully we'll have everybody set. Like I've talked to everybody individually about what committees you're on now and stuff, right? Yes, like, are no, you I realize that. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking that my specifically of the trees for uh, oh arms uh, park uh, that that does that literally gives uh, us a week to plan before I you know before we find uh, a, a representative of the commercial farming business. And I think it's critical. Personally, I would like to see that one wait. Well, I was going to ask you to maybe bill this, and, and I'm not sure how it works, but if, if you have, can you not appoint somebody later in the year? If we have done that. It's just... You'd like not clerk, to. Clerk, clerk administration stuff, we'd like to do it all at once, but, but we in could the past still we've had to run. add and, and take people off before. So, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, if another name came forward, we can always add. Yeah, I, I would... That committee. I, I, well, I know, and I think, we, I think that that is a new committee, and we could certainly... Justified I'd, adding. I'd like more discussion on that. They, the reason, if I may, Mr. Mayor, the reason we put that on is they, I knew the committee was meeting yep. in February. Um, if we wanted to pull that one off, we can let them meet again and see if they can't come forward with a. An, an yeah, it would be an informal. Format. In other words, the people that are on there wouldn't be non, wouldn't be named. It would just be a, still an ad hoc committee until we name it. So you can still op operate in February if you're saying run, but. We can't get some names between now and then, or we could add them later. But they wouldn't be part of the bylaw. Yeah, uh, not, no. not at this point. We'd have to do a separate bylaw. That's all. Okay. It's just an uh, amendment. That's just right? my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Just we'd like to get the committees going, but I mean I understand the one for, for that one. You're just worried about that one, yeah. right? The other ones you're fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to figure that out, or if we want to pull that one out? The uh, Trees for farm for now. We can do the other four. That'd be great. And then just do it once. We can do it again later we'll on. We'll do it, uh, if I may, Mr. Mayor, we'll just do a, an amendment to the schedule yeah. for the trees for, for farm when we have that. Okay. Get, oh, yeah. get us till March anyways, right? Hopefully we can get going and we'll get somebody in the next few weeks, but you're right, it's pretty, pretty tight. Does that need to be part of the if, it, if the motion is just to do one, two, three, and five, then <coughs> cut the report into one, two, three, and five, then that. Yeah. Okay, that as amended. Work. May I just make yep. a suggestion that you do with the current well, that's what members I now and then just add a name later on? Because even yeah. if you're away the month of February, you won't have a name for the March meeting either. So this could, it might be April yes, before would. you get a name. Right? So. Then, if, if at that? least the committee was a valid committee with names on it, then one name could just be added later on. That's that's, that's why I was asking. My, my can, you just, can you just add a couple names if you get a couple more people? On? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. So, is that a problem if we get it all done at once? Sure. Goes to a vote, majority. All right. Okay. Well, you know, well, I just I leave uh, the decision in the hands of the experts or my people for the especially the incubator. And then once we got a good bunch of people around here running, they're not going to get someone on that committee that uh, probably not going to do a very good job for you. So. I, I think it's more the trees for farms. I'm, it's just the trees for farms. That's yeah, the only I know. one. That's what I mean. Like, I have my reasons. I think that there's enough people here that we could probably get a good name for you or, or not. So you hmm? want to kind of look at All right. That. Well, we'll do, we, have, we have one motion on the floor to take one, three, four, and five. One, of them. one two, three, and five? Yeah. Yeah. One, one, yeah. Sorry, one, three, four, and five. Seconder for that motion. You made the motion. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll second. Second, Councilor Hamlet. All in favor of that motion? Vote. Oh. Okay, so we leave it. So go back to the original motion, which is recommendation to do all, all five. Can we add in there that, that we will still be looking? If we can't get, we can add to any of those committees? Sure. I would make that motion. Motion that uh, the recommendation plus the on below no. we can add to yep. a committee at a later date. Yep. Okay. I'll second. Second. Okay, Councilor Tritton, all in favor of that one? Oh. Okay. Gotcha. Passed. Okay. Ice storm bill. Mayor Bridge, we 
weren't necessarily going to report to you on the ice storm, but things are evolving quickly. Provincially, I guess whenever there's an emergency in, Palm or in uh, Toronto, Toronto, then it's a disaster all of a sudden. So yeah. um, I know they were impacted quite significantly. And uh, this storm for Minto wasn't as bad as the April ice storm. We had a quite a bit longer power outage and quite a bit more trees down in April. But we did apply for old rat funding, and I have attached the minister's letter denying that from back, which you received back in November. Um, to read the article about Toronto putting together the damage from the ice storm and the flood that they had um, when I was participating in a conference call with some provincial people and the Wellington people it seems like the minister will consider the cumulative impact of disasters so we were lucky enough to have two ice storms in 2013 uh, we um, should apply for the old rat funding uh, to help us out with those the, the first amount uh, we applied for 102,000. That one of the things we didn't do when we applied is add the cost to try and make it look worse than it was. But we still continue to incur costs throughout the summer, and there are still costs out there for uh, trees that are still laying down in, in, on row allowances and out in, in on properties that we have to get to. And now there are even more trees down. Uh, we believe that our damages could approach, you know, quite a bit more. Um, 150, 200,000 or more by the time we're through that. When you couple that in with last year's winter, um, it's one of the few years will be, there's a potential of looking at some serious budget issues at year end. So uh, we believe we're, we have a valid uh, case for getting <coughs> some help and we have a resolution that we would bring forward for you um, today that we need to forward to the province today if you adopt it and basically stating that we would uh, like them to reconsider on the basis that of the cumulative impact of the two ice storms. Uh, just in general, in terms of public works response and fire department response, uh, I think it was very well done. The county took a role early on. We had lots of warning that this was <coughs> coming, so we set up some communication channels with the county. We set up some internal communication channels here with the staff and uh, during the time when power was out I was able to communicate with council fairly uh, fairly well uh, we set it up so that after 24 hours if we didn't have any relief from the power we were going to be opening warming centers and, and accommodating people and uh, turned out it was you know afternoon when Clifford and, and Palmerston came back online and somewhere late in the evening in uh, for Harrison so uh, relative to Senator Wellington who had um, warming centers open through the holidays. Some of our rural people didn't get holiday, uh, power back till uh, after Christmas. Uh, and it was a challenging time, but I, I think the fire department was very helpful. The, the public works guys, had, having plowed snow all week, then had to move into cleanup mode for this. And uh, all things considered, I think we came through it reasonably well. Uh, there are some costs though, and I think we need to apply for those for, for the, some help. And if, help us forthcoming we certainly wouldn't want to get lost just because we didn't pass the right resolution. So. Question? Uh, I just I just want to make a comment on on uh, Linda Jeffrey's refusal note it's saying that it's three percent of Minto's um, taxation revenue so therefore it wasn't acceptable but if we passed on a three percent increase just for the ice storm to our taxpayers plus and you know another increase that was necessary because of other issues were a three percent increase is quite a bit to our taxpayers on top of any other increase so it, it may not seem like a lot to her that yeah. it's only three percent of our tax revenue but to our constituents i think it is and so what was her forte like what what business was she in before she was appointed to this position teacher answer that one. Teacher, answer I that think one. she's a teacher. <laughs> she's a teacher? No, I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't quote well, me. I'm just, I think I'm just curious of what, what makes a her expert on. Might have been a banker, banker yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we have anybody know? Her staff. Okay, her staff. Mm -hmm. So she is staff. Mm -hmm. Anyone? I did, uh, if I may, Mayor Briggs, I did ask that question, yep. what is the right threshold, and they really don't have, don't one. have an answer. It's not 3%, it's not 5%, it's 
they take into account all kinds of factors. So. It's quite interesting. I think, I, Bill, I think you did the math or was it court? I can't remember one of you had a little bit of math uh, that what the City of Toronto is asking mm -hmm. for to their budget is, is just mm -hmm. around 3%. Right. So it'll be interesting to see whether 3% in Toronto is different than 3% <laughs> in Minnesota. <Mintos. laughs> yeah. uh, an another issue that might be just as interesting is, I believe uh, you spoke to the minister and she said that tr damage caused by trees isn't covered by the disaster relief fund. Exactly. Well, we're going to see that there was a lot of damage caused by trees that fell down because of the ice storm, not just here, but in Toronto, et cetera. So if, it, if she's uh, got money for Toronto because of tree damage, then Minto should be getting uh, funds for tree damage here. It's well. interesting from her, it's a good point, Deputy Mayor, because it, it's interesting from her comments in the letter, she doesn't bring that into it, but when she had the verbal comment with me on the phone, the uh, trees, and since then, because I said, my point was, well, why did we send in for it if, if trees didn't, weren't covered? And basically, I think, Bill, you've looked at it, and trees are covered if they're uh, a safety hazard or across the roads or whatever, they are covered. So she had misinformation when she called me that day. But when she sent the letter, that didn't, didn't come out in her letter. So obviously she got corrected. Because why would we apply if, we didn't, if it didn't qualify? And, and we, you know, we looked through that, and we went through it with their ministry representatives, and they would have told us, don't bother sending in tree things if it doesn't qualify. But ours should have qualified under that. You're right. Just one other point. Um, I'm wondering when the next tax bills go out and in, in perhaps in your message, we could let the citizens know that they're responsible for the first 24 hours of looking after their care or heating their home or whatever the situation may be because I'm not sure that everybody understands that. As soon as the hydro's out, they start calling and when is the warming center opening? And uh, so I think it's important that they be made aware of that. That, that's a good point, and, and the reason the first 24 hours, it actually is supposed to be 72, I think, is the, is the, <coughs> is the quality. We, we've gone 24 in, in, in uh, Minto and Wellington. And the reason is, most times, if you're in a situation like we had with the ice storm, you don't want seniors trying to get to a warming center walking through an ice field. I mean, we'd have more breaks and bones and whatever. So, but I, I do think that is a message that has to get out there better. And we, we have it on our social media, but for our older people, they don't maybe have the social media. So tax bill is a good idea. We can maybe put a message or that's something maybe, uh, and we haven't used it recently, and I'll, I'll put uh, Shannon on the spot. Maybe when we do one of our council corners, we could talk a bit about that and just go over a little bit about the ice storm and what went on and whatever. And I think that might be something we could work on. So if the staff could make up a report that would work for that, we could maybe do that. Yeah, Mayor Bridge, I think uh, as you drive around the, the township, too, of Minto, around through the township, you see a, a lot of uh, trees still in the ditches and all over the place. And I know uh, cleaning up trees in town and branches and stuff, to go out into the township, it's much more labor-intensive to get these uh, trees down and cleaned up. So, I mean, I think our CEO was right. Um, we maybe underestimated the cost. Well, we'll I, I think it's a good idea to go back at them the second yeah. time. And Let's and give it a whirl, and yeah. even if we get a bit of money, that would be better than nothing, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Motion. Just received the report. We have a resolution that... Oh, that we're going to send later. I can read later. Yeah. Okay. Or I can Let's read it now it. if you want. Receive the report for now. Councillor Elliott? Councillor Curtin, all in favour? Okay. Good. <coughs> Oh, and then we have uh, Gord coming up. Well, I'll turn it over to uh, mm. Councillor Caldwell. Okay, the financial department has four items on the agenda today. And the first item is tax collector and treasurer interim tax bylaw. Great, thank you, uh, Chair Caldwell. Um, so this is uh, a report just on the bylaw that will come up later in the meeting uh, where we uh, give authorization to issue the interim tax bills and as you know we usually have an installment in late March and in late May and it's based on 50% of the previous year's billings. Thank you, Authority. Is there any questions or any discussion on that? Then the recommendation is that the Council of the Town of Minto receives the January 2nd, 2014 report from the Treasurer and Tax Collector regarding the interim tax bylaw and consider passing bylaw 2014-01 in open session. Do I have 
So we'll make that motion, please. Mayor Bridge. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Fisk. All in favor? And that's passed. And then our second item is Section 357 Applications, which is Tax Adjustments. Right. And uh, you may note there's a lot that are very similar and the amounts are small. Um, about 90% of the amounts involved here are with regard to the land purchase in Clifford. So basically the town now owns it. We're not using it for a commercial purpose. So it's going from residential to exempt. And then there's one other change in use on a private property. And that's what those ones are. Okay, um, and is there any questions or discussion? So the recommendation is that the Council of the Town of Minto receives a January 2014 report from the Treasurer and Tax Collector regarding Section 357 applications and that these applications be approved. Can I have someone make that motion, please? Councillor Faulkner, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All in favor? Motion passed. And the third item is in regard to our temporary borrowing bylaw. Right, and uh, this is basically our overdraft protection, if you like. Um, it ties us over for non-capital purchases. Uh, again, we've never used it. We've come so close many times. And uh, as you say, it, it's uh, kind of trying to finance our inventories. And as we're reminded by the county and the school boards, they want their money directly. So you'll see some large checks in, in March again, uh, despite the fact that we don't always have the money. Um, one thing that, again, talking about the provincial government listening to us, one uh, change to the way they fund projects, instead of us having to pay the vendors, which we have in the BCF and the ISF, under the new one, um, they have milestones. So if you remember at an earlier uh, council meeting, we uh, signed the agreement for the 16th line bridge project and we got $315,000 at the end of December. So that helps this and, and does reduce it but still we have uh, another ambitious capital uh, spending uh, program probably the next year too. So um, as I say, you don't want to use it, but you need it in place and the <coughs> bank requires it every year too. Okay, is there any questions or discussion? Okay, the recommendation is the Council of the Town of Minto receives the Treasurer's and Tax Collector's report. No, excuse me, is that, should it be Tax Collector on this one as well? Yes, I believe yes. so, okay. yes. He's Tax collectors report dated January 2nd, 2014, and considers passing bylaw 2014-02 in regular council session. Oh, uh, Councillor Curtin, second, please. Mayor Bridge, all in favor? And it passed. And then the final item is our approval of accounts for. Okay, um, again, uh, some of our highlights are uh, on the capital side. Again, we had. Uh, the uh, Minto Howick Road for 138,000. Another installment on Elora Street in Palmerston. There, a bit more on the I and I in Palmerston. Uh, we did some work on our you may call it the SCADA system, and that's our our computers that monitor our, our water wells. So we got a bit of um, work done on that too, and uh, basically some other regular routine items. Uh, Again, this time of year, recreation, we, uh, we spend a lot on, on hydro. That's our big expense these days, too, and heat. So uh, those are the, the highlights, I guess, from that period. Okay, is there any questions? Okay, the recommendation is that Council of the Town of Minto receives the Treasurer's Report dated December 18th, 2013, regarding approval of accounts and approves the Town of Minto accounts by department for December 2013. So I'm make that motion, please. Uh, Councillor Elliott, seconded by Councillor Hamley. All in favor? Thank you very Great. much, Gordon. Thanks very much. <coughs> and I turn the chair back to Mayor Bridge. And we're back to other businesses, schools, additional items. And I believe <coughs> we start with uh, Bill. You got to go first. Mayor Bridge, the February 4th council meeting uh, will not work in terms of uh, attendance and conflicts with conferences and things like that. <coughs> so I'm asking if council would indulge a move to Monday, February 3rd. Uh, the open portion would begin at 3 o'clock and the uh, camp meeting itself would begin at 2.30 if there is a need for closed items. So just a motion to that effect. Would it be rescheduled to the 3rd? No, I'll, the third? 
I'll make a motion. Seconded. I'll oh, second. Oh, second by Deputy Mayor Fisk. All in favor? Terry. Okay, next. And who else do we have? Uh, Terry? Well, I've actually got three items. I haven't had any for a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's all right, Terry. It's time for me to catch up. Uh, the first one was a little um, yeah, that was card that mm -hmm. we received in our package. And um, looking at it, um, there, it's from the Ombudsman of Ontario. And it's talking about recording all meetings open and or closed. And we don't, we don't record our closed meetings. I don't know if that's something that we should be looking at or. If I may, the, uh, it's in, uh, that is the Ombudsman's position. Uh, we do take minutes of the closed session. I would say that in terms of the municipal field, the jury is out on whether they really ought to be recorded in the closed session. So we don't record them uh, in closed. And uh, if you'd like, I can bring back information to you, but I would tell you that it's probably split. No, Some of the experts say don't record them. Um, we have the minutes. But yeah. we well, I just wonder, I mean, that's a recommendation and they're the people that I guess if somebody has a makes a fuss, that's they, they're the ones. No, we we have a closed meeting investigator. That's Norm Gamble. We haven't had to, uh, had to call, call him in in, in Minto, but uh, um, the ombudsman does do it if you don't appoint your own. And uh, I do have his his report, but uh, and you can read it. But you know, that, that, that that's one position. Yeah. Well, I just thought it was interesting and uh, as a council I think we want to be doing what we're supposed to be doing and whether that was where we should be doing that or not uh, the the next one is um, I sent an email to Bill regarding the aero door door drone or whatever they call Spoolsters Airport oh yeah yeah and he was at a meeting or transport Canada sent him something that the highways or the roadways in the area of the airport should be marked accordingly so Bill sent on an email to Paul Johnson, I believe, at the county, and I was somewhat disappointed with his response. He didn't tell us whether it was necessary or not. He was worried about who would pay for it. Yeah, I it, uh, don't want to single Paul out. I'm not sure he knew that, 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 that he maybe thought it was just coming to me. But uh, uh, yeah, we, we haven't run into it in the county. I don't know that there is an air, another airport in the county. So Other than I mean, we're surmising as to how it might work. And uh, I think, talking with uh, Mr. Hansen, we, he hasn't run into it either, so we have to bring back further information. I think he's got a point. Um, probably they ought to be posted that there is an airport, a low flying aircraft. And uh, as to cost, I'm sure the county can afford to put a few signs up and I think we have a road there too that we would need to sign. So we're, we're still looking into it. I haven't got back to Paul since, since those, but he certainly indicated to me in later emails that they certainly look at it if they need to that's fine. Uh, and the final one is uh, back in the fall, we talked about um, getting some advice with respect to our insurance policy. And I'm just wondering where that stands because I'm sure our policy is coming due soon and uh, we were going to review it or have somebody review it for us and perhaps put a tender out. The tender has been out, it closes on the, the RFP has been out, it closes on the 21st. Um, it was, uh, Mr. Bushy did assist me in preparing it. Um, we have responded to the questions that came in as a result from the four, the Senate to four, three have indicated an interest, so we will have bids for the next council meeting. And uh, he was quite helpful in, uh, in reviewing the RFP and, and helping me answer the questions. Worked with the treasurer in getting our billing inventory complete and some information that they needed. So actually there's been very few questions from the insurer insurance company been rather smooth so far. So when it's up in June, right? It's up in March. Or March, sorry, it is March. So we'll have it in time for you to look at in February. So we won't, our renewal will not be lost. In February or in March? March 1st. March 1st meeting, right? Well, March 1st, the renewal is due. We'll have it to oh. council February 3rd. Um, just uh, on that note, for those of us going to be late, will we have that information to us? Uh, the agenda will go out on the Friday before, whatever that, that's yeah. the 31st. Yeah, I, um, 
I will have that. I will have the information report. the 21st, so I can send the summary of mm -hmm. this is what we have. Okay. The, so that, if we have a budget meeting on the 23rd, right? Yeah. yeah. I, in fact, I you can let you know what budget. I, I was just going to say, we can yeah. get, would that be work? Yeah. Is it good then? Is it all going to be good? I won't. I don't know that we'll have a recommendation. No, 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 just some information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And who else? Sorry, I had Ron. Ron Faulkner. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. A uh, little bit of exciting news for for myself uh, uh, is the uh, first land contract uh, for the international farm that was signed today, and, and uh, hopefully by the end of the week we'll have eighty percent of that uh, completed. So. It's uh, really rolling nicely, and we're going to have our first executive meeting this Friday at 1 o'clock at this location. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. I, I attended a meeting on Thursday, January 9th, uh, in reference to the Harriston Food Bank. Um, there was four representatives from the uh, Harriston Ministerial Society that, or, uh, group. There was 14 people there, and there was uh, likely eight or ten others that possibly could have been there that weren't there because of for one reason or another, but uh, we have not decided a location yet. Uh, our friend uh, Bev May, after 23 years of running the food bank, is going to retire. Um, and uh, I just wanted to report that I think we're in good shape, good. and I'll uh, keep the council updated. Uh, yes, I just wanted to report that the annual general meeting for the Chamber of Commerce is on February 3rd. Yes. at 7 p.m. at the Harrison train station. So after the council meeting, we could all so just down mosey down to the food. <laughs> down. <laughs> February the 3rd at the Harrison. Sure. Deputy Mayor wants to know if there's food, that's all. Oh, yes, there'll be food. <laughs> okay, we okay, we discussed that last night. Because we'll be working right through to it, right? <laughs> that's right, right. Yeah, okay. Very good. Anybody else? Well, just to let you know, the mental fire department, the hockey team is undefeated as of the last two years now. How many games do you play, Ray? Uh, we've played, uh, I think, three or four. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Mind your Adam. That's true. Very good. Very good. I was going to say something else there. Yeah, well, we what we want the, uh, the fire chiefs to do is when they're doing their council reports to wear our jerseys, the mental jerseys. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> mental jerseys. Moved by Councillor Turton, second by Councillor Caldwell, that the Committee of the Whole convenes in the Town of Middle Council. All in favor? Oh, I have to read this, eh? Moved by Councilor Turton, second by Councilor Faulkner, that whereas the town of Minnow experienced a major ice storm on April 12, 2013, and experienced substantial damage to the municipal property infrastructure now approaching 200,000, and whereas the town experienced the impacts of a second major ice storm on December 21st and 22nd, 2013, resulting in further damage to the municipality and infrastructure that is projected, projected to approach 100,000 or more, and whereas the cumulative impact of the two ice storms have resulted in actual and projected costs that are beyond the capacity of the municipality to financially manage without undue impact on municipal tax ratepayers. And whereas cleanup from the April ice storm was not completed in that many trees cut down or trimmed along, along roadways and cemeteries and municipal parks for the purpose of ensuring public safety have not yet been cleared from the road allowance and private property due to cost and time, that the December ice storm further aggravated this problem. And whereas the town has received reported damage on private property related to both ice storms that the council and the town of Minnow hereby request the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing to declare the municipality a disaster area for the purposes of the Ontario Disaster Relief Assistance Program. Further, should the Minister declare a disaster area regarding the private component of the ODRAP, council will immediately under the authority of the ODRAP appoint members to, dis to a dis dis disaster relief committee to administer the ODRAP. Okay. <laughs> all, I, I all in favor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All in favor. You don't have to repeat Unanimous that. There. Yeah. Okay. there you go, Bill. There's your there's your power. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Call, and second by Deputy Mayor Fist that the county of the town of Minda ratifies the motion made in the committee to hold. All in favor? Moved by Councillor Caldwell, second by Councillor Turton, that the bylaw number 2014-01 being the bylaw to provide an interim tax levy to be introduced and read in first, second, and third time and passed open council and seal the seal of the corporation hall in favor. Great. 
Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Faulkner, the bylaw number 2014 2 being the bylaw to authorize a temporary borrowing of monies to be introduced to read for a second, third time, and passed open council, seal with seal of the corporation. All in favor? Moved by Councillor Henry, second by Councillor Elliott, bylaw number 2014 03 being the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the January 14, 2014 committee of council meeting be introduced to read for a second, third time, and passed open council, and seal with seal of the corporation. All in favor? Moved by Deputy Mayor Fisk, second by Councillor Faulkner, that the Council of Town of Minnow adjourn to meet again at the call of the mayor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody for that? Okay. Did you have something? No. no. I just, oh.